Hi everybody, so if you're making your wind turbine and you've made this bit, the next bit you're going to want to be doing is getting some power out of it. And of course to get power out of it, what you really need is a generator. A generator is essentially a motor in reverse, and what we've got here is a standard DC motor. And for a very long time, what you really did was bolt your blades onto there, cross your fingers, hope it spins, and it gives some output. This kind of motor is called a radial flux motor, and it's called a radial flux because the magnetic flux follows the radius. But of course, there is another way of looking at these, and that is following the axle. And of course, there is another style of generator called the axial flux because it follows the axle, and it is essentially two discs. Now. I've drawn this up in Tinkercad, but of course you could just cut these discs out of a lump of plastic with a hole saw and drill some holes in it. But I've done this in Tinkercad and I've put the uh, files on Thingiverse if anybody wants them. And you'll notice there's a big cog in the centre and we'll come to that in a minute. The basic though is the disc and on this one there are 18 magnet sets. So there's 18 of these little holes and they're going north, south, north, south, north, south. In there is 15 centimetre by 1 centimetre and 32 near dim magnets and there's a partner to it which is identical and if I put those two like that then the magnetic flux follows the axle and we get an axial flux so we get straightforward magnetic flux lines going between the two if we were to put a copper coil in between those and spin them then of course it's going to generate now i have a, a thing about serpentine coils so i've made a serpentine coil and if you want to know how to make a serpentine coil i've also done a video on how to make serpentine coils so this serpentine coil would go between these two discs when we spin them it's going to generate and that is the basics of an axial flux generator. The first axial flux generator was a Faraday disc which just used a disc of copper in an axial flux arrangement of magnets. Now axial flux generators use less parts, there's only actually three, there'll be four because there's a, a plate to go on it, but it uses less parts, it's much lighter, it's much easier to make and much more tolerant of error, so the tolerances aren't nearly as tight. Of course, the closer you get them, the better, but they're nowhere near as tight. They have their disadvantages in motors in that they are heat dissipation can be an issue, but these have become extremely popular with the growth of electric vehicles because they're much higher torque dense, they're much lighter, so they're much more power dense than a traditional motor. But they make great generators and we're going to make an axial flux generator. What we're going to do with this is just put the cap on there and then put one of these discs on here, the other disc on the other side, and that's our generator made. And there it is put together. Now the only thing I've done is stuff an M8 bolt down the centre. There is an M8 washer between the magnet disc and the coil disc to stop the plastic bits rubbing. And then the other side is connected there with a nut to hold the whole thing together. So that's all there is to it. I've stuck a handle on it here, which is just a, a broom handle adapter. Again, that's in the files, just so I can hold on to it. But that's finished. If I give that a spin by hand, I've got a meter here. We'll get some kind of reading out of it. There we go. So it's really that simple to make something like this. Now I mentioned these cogs. These cogs are because I like to make things in a modular kind of way so that we can do different things with them. And obviously that cog fits this, which is the earlier wind turbine version that we made. And if we just slot that on, we have ourselves a wind turbine. Clearly I'm going to put both of them on and we'll get some readings out of it. But remember this, it's our planetary gear system. If we put the planetary gear system on there, then we get ourselves a hand crank generator. So to give this a go, what I've done is I've made this connector. Now that's available in the STL files as well, and it just goes onto one of the cogs. Now I've tried to make this as adaptable as possible. So these actually aren't linked. They're held by the magnetic lock between the two series of magnets, but they will be able to slip. It also allows you to contra-rotate it, so you could drive one one way and the other the other way if you wanted to. If you don't want that to happen, then what you'd have to do is uh, create a plug where the bearings go so that if the axle went right the way through and that would lock the two discs, but you'd have to put the bearings in the centre part there where the coil is, but you can do that as an add-on if you like. The other thing is I've just chosen north, south, north, south, north, south. Could make a halback array if you wanted to. The other thing is you could put a steel 
disc on there as well to direct the flux path of that. Now that's conventional wisdom, I'm not sure if I'm convinced about that, but it is a fairly adaptable thing. Now of course we're going to put it onto this, which is our planetary gear set. There we go. And we'll give it a spin and see what we get. And I've got it hooked up to this meter here. So let's spin that up and see what we get out of it. There you go, 60 volts without even breaking into a sweat. Now, although we did this version in the hand crank generator, it should be pretty obvious you could attach this to a bike if you wanted, you attach it to other gearing systems if you wanted, you could attach it to a water wheel if you wanted. There's a whole range of things you could attach this generator to, making it very adaptable. Of course, we want it because we're working on this dual arrangement. One will go that side, or one will go that side. Equally, you could do contra rotation. Equally, these principles are all the same. So if we sat it that way and put a, a Savonius on top, we'd have a vertical wind turbine. So it's a very adaptable, easy to build generator that's relatively cheap and performs quite well when you consider. Now uh, this wire is 0.2 millimeters diameter enamel copper wire and there are 500 turns on the serpentine coil. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.